So I ask you to imagine a hypothetical situation, uh, hypothetical scenario where you are who? who? Who are you for this hypothetical thought experiment? Well, we're just, someone working with them. Corner office, remember? Um, yeah. Yeah, your, your, doc, your name is Dr. Dre. Maybe you're Janet Dre. Maybe you're Jack Dre. But you're Dr. Dre, and, and what are you? What is your job? Wh who are you the boss of? Yeah, the tech comm program, the people that teach 2311, right? And 2311 is the big for the tech comm program. The hugest enrollment undergraduate course. There's like 30 to 40 sections taught every semester. It involves more than a dozen. And I think this semester there's like 15 different people teaching 2311. Almost all of them graduate students. A lot of those graduate students, it's their very first teaching experience. They got a few like two people like me who have been here for a long time and don't need much supervision. Don't need much supervision, um, regardless of what we get. Um, and then there's also periodically some people that just come off the street. Like we need to open up two more sections, so we gotta hire someone you know, off the street who can hopefully teach. So I ask you to imagine a situation where you're Dr. Dre and you know that this semester you've got one of those off the street people to deal with his names aren't tricky, you've never met him. You have your organization meeting before the semester starts to make sure that all your instructors are on task and you know have their syllabi done and know what the requirements are because there's a common, sort of a common core syllabus that everyone's accountable to. And Art Fricky did not show up. Just didn't show up. Never met the guy. You don't know much about him other than he's got a PhD in something and he's not a graduate student. And he did not show up to the meeting. So, here's the thing. The next day, let's say the meeting was uh, yesterday, was Monday, and now today is Tuesday, right? And you roll into your office at about, what, 11.07, uh, because you're Dr. Dre, right? Um, and you check your email. And out of the 50 or so emails that you already have stacked up in your inbox, here's one of them. To Dr. Dre from AA Ranch at sbcyahoo.com. Subject line, meeting. Meeting. Hey, what happened at the meeting? The classes are great. Let me know what I need to do. Thanks, Art. And I asked folks to already have looked at this and maybe take a note or two about is there something, like something concrete about this email that affects your feelings towards Art right now? So who's got something concrete? Yeah. It doesn't look like he's using his professional email. Okay, so give me <laughs> one concrete thing. That's the first thing I noticed. Yeah, give me one concrete thing. That's a conclusion. Give me one concrete thing that results in that conclusion. It doesn't look SPC professional. SPCYahoo.com. Okay, boom. Yeah. Oh, oh, I thought you were talking about the whole email. No, so just the actual gotcha. email. So the email address itself, does, it's like not as bad as one of those drunk texts in app, right? Yeah. But so, what does that make you, first of all, does that help you stay organized? No, no because there, a name is probably not attached to, because like with ours, you know, it is right. our first and last name attached to that email. This, this yeah, in fact, it's probably name. lucky it showed up in your inbox in the first place, because we all know how new cappy the TTU system is about spam, 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 right? Um, and yeah, second, it doesn't tell you anything about who is this from. Yeah, so that's not helpful. So it's kind of... Cool. Email address. Not helpful at best. At worst, unprofessional. Great. What's another concrete thing? Yeah. Yeah, meeting. Yeah, meeting. yeah speaking of <coughs> not helping me to prioritize, because remember, you, you get a lot of emails. This is like one of 50, right? You got to prioritize. Meeting. What meeting? I don't know. You're Dr. Dre. You're busy. You're in a lot of meetings. What about this mystery meeting that? Does this in any way help you prioritize, should I read this or not? Does it help you to stick it in a folder to keep it organized? Does it help you to search? <coughs> so what is it doing? It's wasting your time. What does that make us think about art? Yeah, and wastes our time. <laughs> uh, okay, 
Something else, concrete. Yeah. Capitalization. Yeah, what about it? There is not. Lacking. <laughs> well, you got it together. So, so it's two sentences, right? Those are capitalized. That's not. That's not. His name isn't capitalized. So, so we not. know that his keyboard has like a shift key, right? It's capable of capitalization. So we have two possibilities of why is this and this and this not capitalized. One possibility is he's incapable, well actually we have three possibilities. One is he's, he's incapable of capitalizing things now because those are capitalized. Second possibility is he does not understand that a salutation should be capitalized. He does not understand that the first letter of a name should be capitalized. Is that like Hopefully not. Hopefully, I mean, he's teaching English classes, but yeah. So it's probably not that. So what's the only explanation you're left with? It's lazy. He just didn't care. Didn't care yeah. This would probably, this, uh, this would probably say sent from my iPhone. <laughs> Which, by the way, if you if you have an iPhone and you haven't taken that off, take it off. Because a lot of people have a knee-jerk reaction to when they see that, they just can't. Right. So, not everyone, but some people do. So, why not take it off? And it's easy to do that anyway. Um, but yeah, so, uh, you just didn't care. So, what does that make you feel? Well, do you think work working work. with art will be easy? No. Why? It's difficult. Then, if he doesn't care, then why would... Then he's going to waste your time. <laughs> um, something else. Yeah. Uh, the introductory, or the, the hey, it's not. Hey, 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 hey! You haven't met me yet. <laughs> yeah, that is not appropriate. Um, so, like a B should be like, dear Dr. Dreamer. Right. Yeah. So either he really doesn't care, or that's a sign that he doesn't really even understand professionalism. And he's going to be teaching your classes that if there are class problems, you're going to have to deal with ultimately. What kind of warning? Do you think that this guy m might be prone to like a grade complaint? Yeah. Or a student issue? Yeah. If you don't under if you don't understand context like that little, then that's what the warning sign. So, you looking forward to working with Art? Okay. Anything else? I'm just pointing it out, he didn't even put his last name. He's just R. That's oh. while that may be a slightly less common name, that does not help it's anyone. It's not that common. <laughs> Arthur. Art. I'm Art. Although it's lower cases. <laughs> and there are a lot of other things that we could, like why wasn't he at the meeting? What would you have to, if you if you wanted to prevent potential future problems, right, by being on top of this guy right to begin with, if you wanted to break through that, like, oh, he doesn't care, well, better get on that now and figure out a way to get him to care, or else it's going to create more problems down the road, right? Let me know what I need to do. What do you have to literally do to, like, respond, like, to get on top of this guy, what do you need to do now? <coughs> I mean, you don't have the time to go and brief him on everything that was well, spoken about. That, assuming that you did. Brief him on everything that happened in the meeting? Put your ticket was large. I mean, the class, let me know what I need to do. What, Like, what happened at the meeting? Okay, how, how long is it going to take to bang that out in an email? Say it was an hour meeting. I don't know, you were taking meeting notes. And then second, let me know what I need to do. Well, how long is that likely to take? Yeah. Or let's say another half hour. So this is like an hour of an email response. So, I mean, if I'm going to get on top of this guy to really do it well, may, and maybe I make a choice to do that, to say, well, if I spend an hour with this guy right off the bat, then maybe I can save myself five hours in a great appeal situation down the road. You know, people do that math all the time. But, or I could do nothing and just cross my fingers. But again, that could like create.
create even more time for you down the road. So yeah, so the literal do is, tell me what happened in the meeting, let me know what I need to do, um, spend an hour doing that, thank you. I mean, if nothing else, he at least could have said, what has he already done? Because that's going to be probably your first email. What have you already done? Hope he replies, replies to it timely, and maybe that'll save you some time. But yeah, this is going to be like three or four emails back and forth, and it's probably going to be at least an hour of your time. Um, do we like art? Oh. I'll just assume it's unanimous. Is there anybody who does like art? There you go. And here's why. Here's why you don't like art. He's going to waste your time. You know this. You know this from just that first contact. The same way that I know from a much longer, much more involved, much more complicated email. There are some folks here. There are other folks that are going to be not a problem. I know this already. It doesn't take much for people to figure out who the person is already. Now, maybe Art will develop into someone else over the, through the course of time. I hope he does. But right now, that's who he is. So that's his starting point. So that's... I don't want to work with him now. So there's that. And here's why you had that reaction. Um, regardless of your religious faith or lack of, we all at least intellectually understand that we're mortal. We only have so much time on this planet in this plane of existence. Now, if you're an atheist, then you really hate art. Because if you're an atheist, you're settled and you're okay with the idea of, like, this is all you get. You need nothing else. And I have to spend <coughs> a couple of seconds of that precious mortal time dealing with you? I don't like that. That's the reason why people don't like being stuck in traffic. That's the reason why people don't like waiting in lines. This, we, we know we're mortal. So here's what Art is doing. He's stealing my life, if you're Dr. Dre. He's literally stealing your life. That's what vampires do. Right? So Art is a time vampire. And they, those are, that's a thing. That's a thing. There are people that you will work with. You've already worked with them. You know what I'm talking about. They just, they come around and like, you know, you're working on a project and like, and they leave, and you're like, where, where, where did you Somehow I'm left with even more to do than when they showed up. You know? They suck your life. Suck your life. You know? The worst is when you do this to yourself. Right? It's like, what? oh my god, I spent... Oh. Suck my own life out. It's terrible. It's terrible even when you're your own time in part. But it happens a lot. So we don't want to be that person. <coughs> First of all, because people won't like you eventually. Um, and second of all, it's just not moral. <laughs> you know, it's not Buddhist. It's not who wants to be that person. Just oh, I'm okay with. No one wants to be that, really, when you put it in those terms. So, how do you not be a time vampire? Well, here's what you do. You save other people's time. It might take a little bit more of your time initially, but you'll also be surprised with once you start, you know, behaving as the opposite of the time vampire, how it also starts generating time for yourself too. It does. It makes things easier in the long run for you, but it really makes things easier for other people. So, same situation, same exact situation. You had the meeting. 14 of the 15 instructors who are going to be teaching 2311 this semester showed up. The only one who didn't was Art, who you have not met yet. He didn't get in touch with you beforehand, but now he gets in touch with you the day after. Okay, So you open up your inbox, you got like you know 50 emails, blah, 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 blah. This is one of them. To Dr. Dre from arthur.fricky at ttu.edu. English 2311, comma, missed organizational meeting. Dear Dr. Dre, 
as you know, comma, I missed yesterday's beginning of semester 2311 instructors meeting. I had an unexpected dental emergency. This email summarizes what I've done so you can be assured that I'm on top of it. First body paragraph. I have posted my updated syllabus at http www.facultyenglish.com along with the assignment descriptions for the entire semester. The syllabus and assignments match the general rubric for consistency across all 2311 sections. Second body paragraph. In addition, comma, I put together attendance lists for my two sections, 002 and 006. I don't think there are any students with registration problems. I will let you know right away if there are any administrative problems that I need assistance with. Period. Close. I think these are all the administrative things I needed to do to stay on top of my course organization responsibilities, period. Please let me know if there are any additional administrative things that I need to do before the next 2311 instructors meeting on Tuesday, January 20th. Period. Thank you. Art for Okay. Forget the previous email. This is your <laughs> first email from Art. Same situation once again. You missed the meeting. Um, what are the things in that email that make you think, I don't want to work with art? What are the things in the email that, like, you know, give up those previous feelings of, like, oh, anything? Nothing? Okay, well, then I'm. Let's look at the situation. Let's see what you're, where you're at then. How many people are like not looking forward to working with art? How many people are looking forward to working with art? <coughs> Seriously, it's unanimous. There's, you're still a little on the fence. Well, I'm, if we're gonna look at, at every single part of that email, yeah. I, the only reason I would have any question about art is the fact that he missed the meeting in the first place. Right. But he took care of everything he needed to anyways. So. Right. So you might still be like unexpected dental. Well, maybe he's one of those people that yeah. always has an unexpected emergency, right? Yeah. But that's, you're not going to find any of that out until semester continues anyways. Right. <laughs> and so you might send an email back. And this would be a good probe <coughs> in that situation. Because you might get, those people exist. They're like, they're well-meaning. But like, there's always something. So here's how you could suss that out. You could send him an email right back. Because he's invited you to say, please let me know if there are any additional administrative things. Even if there isn't, you might email back to say, hey, thanks for uh, sending me that email. I really appreciate it. Um, I hope that you won't have unexpected problems again because the meetings are really important. And then here's what you would do. You would wait and see, does he reply or not? If he doesn't reply, he's likely the unexpected emergency person. If he okay. does reply right away with like, yeah, I understand. It won't be a problem. And see, that's the thing. is If he replies like four days later, what don't be a problem, it'll be a problem still. But if he gets right back to you, then it's like, no, he really wishes that he was at the meeting. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That would, that would trip a little alarm bell, too. So you're kind of, but everyone else is like, sure, no problem. Work with this guy. Yeah. So then, Guess what? It's the literally the bizarro world version. I mean, look at what this email has done. It has changed 99% of the sentiment. Literally, almost 100% people have gone from like, I want nothing to do with that guy to, sure, I'd love to work with that guy. You know what else works that way? Magic. Pixie dust. Because here's what this email signifies. Art is a time pixie. Here's what time pixies do. When they come around, it's like, oh, we're we'll working on this project together. And then I leave and you're like, dude, suddenly I have more time. Maybe I thought this project was going to take like 10 hours and now it's, oh, no, it's, it's just going to take like five. Oh. Thank you, Time Pixie. Right? And the cool thing with Time Pixies, and this is where you know, it works out, it's like it, this is more effort for art to write up front. right? But it's going to save our time down the road. He just picks it himself. Time Pixies. Everybody loves Time Pixies because they give you life. 
Again, we've established that's what we've got here in this plan of existence. It's just time on this earth. <coughs> so someone who gives you more of that, yes, please, I would like to hang out with that person as much as possible. Time pixies. Okay, so let's point out a couple things. Um, because here's the thing about being a magical time pixie, it's not magic. It's not, it's, not, it's not anything mystical. It's just doing things differently. That's it. Basically doing the opposite of what a time vampire would do. Because being a time pixie is literally the opposite. So what are some opposite things that are dead in this email? Like really concrete stuff. Stuff that's like, well, I don't know quite how that happened, but I mean just literal, just compare the two and say, well, this is this and that was that. Instead of just straight up asking what needed to be done, he already did it. And there you go. Just told him that he did it. Yeah. Instead of saying, oh, what do I need to do? And hopefully you're psychic that you know what I've already done. Instead, he turned it around and he said, well, obviously Dr. Dre is not psychic, so I better tell her or him what I did. It's more just an update. Yeah. There you go. So... The, uh, the, the concrete thing there is looked at things from Dr. Dre's point of view. And wrote from there, sure. Anything even even simpler than that? This is more professional with like, the greeting. Professional greeting. Dear Dr. Dre. That's nice. They followed professional guidance. And, and what? From this email, which is what you were talking about, right? It's not going to get nuked and it's searchable down to so the subject line. I'm one of your English 2311 folks. This email is about me missing the meeting. There you go. That saves me time and helps me prioritize. Uh, is it easy to skim? Why? Broken up. Broken up. It uses clear line breaks between paragraphs. Does that save you time? Yep. Does it use long, complicated sentences? Mm -hmm. Nope. Why do you like that? Makes it faster to read. We've already established that Art hopefully is a smart guy. He doesn't have to prove it by using a semicolon every other sentence. Probably incorrectly. Cool. Pretty simple. But you need to be mindful of it and always ask yourself before you do something, okay, wait a minute. How would it how would a vampire do this? So I'm not going to do that. But what a time pixie do? Yes, I will do that. You know, all the way down to the concrete stuff. Like, well, wait a minute. Which email is am I? Which account am I going to send this from? What am I going to type in the subject line? What am I going to use for the salutation? How am I going to format the paragraphs? What sort of um, style am I going to use? Those are simple. Well, this or this or this, and then you just choose one and do that. And it comes down to matching the situation. So that's why for the first committee progress email report, it's really a first exercise in imagining who is your hospital director, what can you do for them in an email that time pixies them a little bit. And that's why I ask folks to be very clear about here's the concrete situation with that.